All right, guys, we got a 2004 Honda Accord uh, V6. Uh, the transmission on the tag, it says B-A-Y-A. -A. This is a five-speed automatic. And the problem with this was probably after driving it maybe a mile or so, uh, it would stop moving like the screen uh, was clogged up and it stopped moving. The oil looks pretty bad. So we're going to take off all the outside stuff first and then we're going to pull the cover off and start breaking this down. So on the outside uh, we have the uh, linears A and B. Uh, this is linear C which is kind of dedicated to the TCC and then we have a, a third gear pressure switch and fourth gear pressure switch behind this black cover and then we have shift solenoids Actually, I believe it's three shift solenoids and another TCC on-off lockup solenoid, or some people just say four shift solenoids. Uh, have a speed sensor here, speed sensor here, and this uh, the transmission cooler actually sits here on top, and it's not your conventional one like the radiator. And this is the cooler return filter. So there's water pipes and stuff that run to this, and and the fluid flows through. And this is the cooler or the fluid warmer, whatever they want to call it. And here is your rain sensor. Rain sensor down here. So we're going to start by taking all the outside stuff off of this trains and then we'll get into it internally. Um, usually with this, uh, the weak point on this transmission is third gear. So I'm sure we'll see what happened. You know, we had to tow this in because it really wouldn't move that great. So let's get started and see what we find. So I'm going to take all the outside stuff off first. These are these feed tubes for the, cell, the linear solenoids. I want to remove those so we don't lose them. Okay, and we'll get linear C out. A, uh, here is the screen, kind of like the gasket with the screen on it. Okay. This is kind of like the gasket with the screen on it for the linear C. And also, in here there's probably a, another little small screen. This is another small screen right inside here. Anytime you take that linear C up, there's usually one in there. Um, sometimes people tend to forget about it and they put it in a wash tank and then it's gone. All right, so now we'll take the line off. Take it this from here. And I just have to get my 17 socket. Let's see. Here. Okay. This is the one that's over the diff with the little stem on it.
There's also washers, uh, washers on each side. All right, so this will come off. Let's put this back on so we know where it goes. Okay, next we're going to take this top piece where the cooler sits and the cooler return filter. Okay, this also has a feed pipe with an O-ring, gasket, and a dowel pin. That is your speed sensor, one of your speed sensors. Alright, these solenoids I'll actually get uh, after. So now we're going to flip this up and take uh, the MLP off, uh, this couple of wires for the Pressure switches. Okay, now we'll take this cover off for the manual lever, position sensor or, or digital range sensor. sensor. Okay, let's put this back here. Okay. Okay, so this should be your third pressure switch, this is your fourth. And this here is your transmission temp sensor. Let's see if we can get that. Sometimes those get stuck in there pretty good. And this one may come out because it's moving already. Okay, that is your temp sensor. out of the way. Okay, so now we're going to start taking off the top cover. We'll expose the idle gears, the third clutch drum. Okay. 
Here are your uh, your feed pipes. You want to check them, make sure they're smooth because they are they seal with bushings. And here is your third accumulator. And your other feed pipes fit right in here, and there's O-rings here. Take this off. Here's your parking foil. Here's a spring for the parking foil. Here's a rock. Okay. So just by feeling this here, this third clutch definitely is uh, worn out. Uh, so now we've got to take these uh, end nuts off. I need my tool. Right, I'm just, uh, these nuts are, um, are crimped. The end nuts are crimped, so I'm just uh, undoing that. And then you got two of these that are opposite thread. Here. Let's see which one it is. Okay. Uh, let me get my gun. Okay, so this is going to come off opposite. This one here is going to come off opposite, and this is going to be the regular way. So, I have my gun on forward. And now reverse. Okay. There's actually a way to tell if you look at the end nut after it's all clean you would see an arrow on it, and the arrow that you're seeing on these end nuts is the way that it tightens. If you don't see one, then it's the regular way. If you do see one, then it's up, up. Alright, I have that washer, that washer is in it, but let's see if we can get this, let's see if we can get this out. Okay, here's the washer. Okay, so definitely looks like these clutches are flaked. Let's open this up now and see what it looks like. All right, these things are completely shot. Clutches and steels have to be replaced in this. There's nothing even left on this one. It's all worn down. And this is third gear. A lot of times what happens also is it takes out the spring, the spring seat, the snap ring, but all this looks pretty good. So we're gonna use that over again. Clutches and steels, no good. Gotta change them. Okay, here is third gear. We wanna inspect the surfaces, make sure there's no pitting. This is normally Pretty good. All right, now we're going to use the puller and take these gears off.
get the socket for that. Okay, grab my coffee here. So let's get this gear out of here. Okay, switch it over to the other one, pull the other gear off, and then there's the bar gear. it up and then see if we can get the gear out. different all right now we'll evenly you know what there's a couple o-rings that seal So we're going to get rid of those. Okay, here's two O-rings. Seal the third. Now let's see if we can get this off. I just go back and forth, then it'll lift the gear. Then if I can get my uh, tool under there, I'll see if I can pop the gear up. the uh, part of the linkage here. You got to bend this tab up, take that 10 millimeter bolt out, and pull that linkage out. Let me get something for that.
Okay, here is the linkage. Or well, yeah, for the, for the select. All right, we got to line up to get the case half off. Uh, there's a uh, a pin that comes out for the spring, and you got to line that up for the case halves to come apart. Okay, and let's see if we can get the idle bolts out. Not like that. Slide this up. We'll take the rod out. There's the eyelet gear is in there. Here's a flat washer, round, like a barrel uh, bearing, and another one. And then there's one more washer in the case uh, that's underneath the gear that we can get out once the case has get separated. Okay. So I think that's it for the top. Now we're going to take all the bolts out around and separate the two halves. this case up and the way that I do that is I get my big screwdriver under right under here right where the solenoids are and I give it up and of course wants to be stubborn normally they come right up I get another ledge Probably stuck on the dowels. Let's see, we do have all the bolts. Yeah. Come up, probably just stuck on the dowels. So we gotta get a sweet another there's another dowel here. Here is the 
idly gear, and that other washer I was talking about, right here. Your, this is your reverse gear setup. Now we're going to get the fork. Together, there's a big step here, and that step is going to face up. Right here is the hub that goes in the middle. Also, the hub you have, um, I guess, like another stepped area here, which is flat and is flat here. Uh, so, this area with the step also is going to face up. Here's four gear. Now here is your main shaft. This house is fourth and fifth gear. Secondary shaft. This has a second, first, and low hold. And here is your camera shaft for your pinion and your drive gears. And the differential. So let's uh, move this aside for now and open up, see what these versions look like. Okay, so this here I'm gonna make sure everybody can see. Okay. So this here is fifth. Here's the Want a bearing there set up right out. Okay, let's see. It's right here. Okay, not bad. The clutches, you know, burnt. They're going to be changed. I use the uh, uh, Raybestos GPX, and I always change the bottom steel because it gets a uh, a groove in it from the cushion. It's a groove in it from this beating up against that all the time. So I always change the bottom steel. All right, I'm gonna flip this over. So this is your main shaft with your O-rings. Okay, you got uh, ceiling rings here, uh, bear bearing there. And this is fourth gear. We'll get the bearings out of the way. And let's see how these look. Okay, let's open this. Okay, pretty much the same as fifth. You know, clutches are going to be changed, bottom steel is going to be changed because of the groove. Because of the groove that's in there. So this is fourth. Third, we know, is shot. That's going to need clutches and steels. So that you've seen already. Okay, so let's move all these out of the way. Uh, 
second, first, and long hold. We'll get these out of the way. Okay. You want to check like all these flat bearings and round bearings, you know, make sure there's no pits in there. They're usually pretty good. Some of those flat ones on that, especially going on second, have a tendency to go bad, so you just want to make sure you pay close attention to that. Okay, this is second. Okay, second doesn't look too bad. But again, we're gonna do the uh, clutches. I always do uh, banner kits and whatever steels have to be done. And on the on the fifth speed, on the five speed, uh, the third clutch seems to be the weak point, and on the four speed, the second clutch seems to be the weak point. Generally pretty good. This is the first. Here, yeah, these uh, don't look too bad. Steel's got a little heated up. Probably wind up putting a, a, you know, fixing those up. Some of the steels I like to change. You know, I feel when you change uh, uh, steels, because uh, steels do get worn out, and uh, like on the four speeds, I always change the second speed steals and the clearance comes up perfect. Okay, and these of course look okay, but again, got a banner kit sitting over here waiting to be installed. Okay, now, I'm gonna take this apart and we're going to take a look at the uh, low gear, which is the inner spray brace. Let me just get these lights back on. Okay. All right, so we got three rings here. We're going to take these three rings off. Okay, now we're going to get the snap ring out. I'll just get my pliers for that. Okay, so the snap ring is going to come out. And okay, then we have the cover. Be careful, I don't want to lose anything. Uh, here's the cover for the split ring, and we have a split ring. Okay, two, two pieces. And then we have the washer, big washer. And this whole thing will come out. Here's the bearing, and here's two more bearings. Okay, so we'll move all this aside. Don't want to lose anything. All right, now I gotta hit this hub down. Let me just find the proper pushing driver. Got to hit the hub down and that will let us check the race. Okay. There's the hub that came out. And this is low gear. And if there's any signs of wear on this thing, I wouldn't use it over again. 
and this actually does feel does feel like there is wear it's not smooth it's you can see up here there's like a little little step so this uh, this I wouldn't I wouldn't use back especially that it's more on one side than on the other okay so um, I just want to clear some of this stuff out of the way and then we're going to talk about the uh, uh, valve body. So just give me a few minutes and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so what I'm really going to do with this thing is I'm going to pull the filter off and then we'll just identify the different valve body sections. I'm actually not going to pull it apart right now. I'm probably going to continue filming tomorrow. And I'll, I'll pull these apart tomorrow morning. But let's just identify a different section. There's five different sections of this valve body. All right, just removing this. This is the uh, uh, piece for the fork for reverse and, and, uh, and fourth. I'm going to move the filter. section here, one here, one here, and the main valve body, and you have a section here, and another one here. Okay, so this top portion here is called the top accumulator body. Uh, the one down here, uh, just below, this top section comes off, then you have the um, servo valve body, which houses the servo to select reverse. Then under that is the main valve body. Okay, then you have the regulator body, which houses the pressure regulator valve. And that's also mounted to the main valve body. Main valve body runs all across. And then here is called the accumulator body. Uh, so you have the top accumulator body and the accumulator body. Okay, this usually houses the one and two accumulator. This usually houses the fourth and fifth accumulator and a third is in the back cover and here is your linkage piece here it's all attached to the main case so um, we're gonna probably I'm gonna probably take all this apart later just don't have any place to put the the valve body pieces it's kind of crazy here right now a lot of, a lot of work to do um, so we'll continue with this but I didn't want to identify all the valve body pieces so I will return and we will continue. All right, so continuing on with this VAYA, I'm just gonna uh, take the sections out, uh, each valve body section, and I will start with the top accumulator valve body section. And that houses the, houses actually the fourth, the fifth, and it has another one on top for the low hold. Is uh, clutch pressure control C or C? Yeah, cl clutch pressure control C. So this is very important. You want to make sure this valve is very free. Nice. So 
side. Here is the separator for that. So that was CPC C, clutch pressure control valve C. Okay, now next we got to get the regulator body off because uh, there is a, we got to take that up, take the slide up, and there's a bolt behind the slide that we're going to have to get. Off. So we'll do this first. Here is your pressure regulator valve, lock up valve, and here is a screen. The screen actually is pretty clean. And right here. So we're going to put that aside. Right here is this piece comes out. This moves the, uh, sits on here and it moves the uh, regulator, pushes on the spring, okay, separate that, and this piece here, it sits inside, goes like that, so we'll put this aside, all right, now we're going to get the servo body off, Take that last bolt out. And in the servo body, you have the two valves, very important valves, clutch pressure control valves A and B. Those are the valves that I like, well actually all the valves have to, but especially those have to fall out under their own weight. Okay, we have another screen just like before. Goes right in here. Okay, on this one there is one check ball in this section. So we got that. And then here we have the TCC valve. Magnet. I don't want to lose that. Okay. A little check ball for the that goes. Uh, check ball goes in first, and then the spring goes on top. Okay. The linkage. This pin is just going to pull right out. I move this out of the manual valve. Lift it right off. Actually, let's put this aside. Okay, then next we're going to do the accumulator body. Now this is the first and second accumulator. Okay. 
set or a bolt set. And here's a cover plate. And under that cover plate, there should be two check balls. There's one. There's two. This up. And then there's a little feed tube. And there's a uh, there's a piece right in here. They call that an accumulator choke valve or an accumulator valve. Uh, and here's the two accumulators here. This should be first. I believe, and I believe that's a uh, second. Okay, now I'm going to take the main portion of the valve body off. So that we have 10 millimeter and three 12 millimeter. Gears. You want to inspect the uh, pocket, make sure everything is good around the crescent, it's not worn. They're generally pretty good. Alright, now this pump gear, I may have mentioned this before in another Honda video. Uh, this is smooth here and this has a groove here. So the groove is going to face down when it goes back together, just like that. So we'll put it facing up this way and then the valve body will go on. And as far as the clearance, you check it with a straight edge and with the feeler gauge on the pump. Uh, I would say no more than like 0 .002. 0 0.025 is kind of pushing it. I don't think I would use it. It may cause a delay when it gets hot. And you'll probably lose, that would cause a delay because you would lose line pressure. Um, could be up to possibly about 30 pounds. Okay, here is the separator plate. I'm going to tip this up, and now what we're going to do is we'll take the uh, take the solenoids off. the black connector, the brown connector. I mean, all four of these are the same. You know, the black is the same, the brown is the same. Just make sure you put them back in the right spot. And we will get these. thing you just want to do is just inspect uh, as much as you can these bearings because this this bearing like I showed you uh, in the main case that ball bearing this likes to wear as well but this seems okay because sometimes this whole thing will spin 
you know, right in the right right in the pocket. But this seems okay because it's not really doing anything. It's stationary. This one seems good. And uh, I guess that's about it for this uh, B A Y A five speed trans. Now we're going to be doing this up. These are the uh, these are the, those new style clutches that I use just to let you know. It's uh, Raybestos GPX. These are very good. Uh, the OE clutches I pretty much wouldn't use. I wouldn't use them if you gave them to me for nothing because they have the issue with the uh, uh, material that flakes off and it just naturally flakes off. I actually had, before I started using these, you really didn't have a choice only to use the OE. And I had actually had Hondas coming back to me under warranty with the clutch material flaked off within 12,000 miles. So after that, and they came out with those clutches, I would never use those again. So my advice, if you are building these transmissions, I would not use the OE frictions. Find a transmission supply like Transstar, depending on where you live, there's whatever it takes, suppliers, and get a kit with the GPX frictions. Those seem to be the best. All right, guys, so I guess that is about it for this five-speed. I thank you for watching, and uh, one thing that I'm gonna do also is I take my stone and flat sand everything uh, before I put it in the, in the uh, tank to be clean. And uh, I guess that's about it. I got another case coming actually. What I'll do is the case will be here today and I'll give you a shot of the case because it's gonna be sleeved uh, where those bearing rides, that bearing that I showed you had a lot of play in it. So I'll get a shot of that case uh, so you can see what that sleeved case looks like. All right guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. All right, one thing I did want to show you guys on these five speeds is uh, these cases uh, tend to wear. So you might hear like a high-pitched gear noise as you're driving the car. Uh, may change with road speed. Um, and these bearings tend to wear out and wear the case because it's an aluminum case. I don't know if you can see that moving. It's actually moving side, side to side. So uh, they do make sleeves. You know, you have to send a case out and have it sleeves or, I mean, I buy from Transstar and they have these things normally in stock. But this, uh, you know, to a certain extent, you, you could probably get away with it, but this seems pretty bad. I mean, this, uh, I'm afraid this thing would possibly make a noise. We really couldn't drive the car because the screen was clogged. So uh, this case is gonna be changed. So I did want to make you aware of these uh, these five speeds. Uh, they do uh, tend to wear the case out. All right, I just want to give you guys a shot of the rebuilt case that is sleeved. As you can see, the sleeve sleeves are here, here, and here. And now these bearings are nice and tight, and the gear train will run true. So I just want to give you a shot of this uh, rebuild case I just got uh, with all the bearings asleep. All right, guys, that's it.